Hi there, I'm Jared, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process of doing a worksite from beginning to end. Just a PSA, throughout this video, I'm gonna shorten the term service channel provider, which is one of the apps we use, to SCP, just to make it easier. This video might seem like a lot, because it kind of is, but once you watch all the way through and do a worksite for yourself, it'll make much more sense. The first thing is to navigate to your stop. You can find the route in your Samsara app, click on its location, and it should prompt you to open up those coordinates in your Maps app, whether that be Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever you got. Once you arrive at the site, the app should automatically update because it can detect that you're there using GPS and whatnot. Then you got to get your work order number, which will be in the notes section in the Samsara job site. Next thing you got to do is get that work order number and put it into service channel provider. So take note of the number you got and copy paste it into service channel provider. Then we'll scroll down to get the correct site that we're at. Once you find the right site, click check in. Then you're going to create a document in Samsara by clicking the purple icon here. Click create a new document at the bottom select the correct store for the site that you're on. If at any point there's an error message preventing you from doing any of these steps or doing anything in the proper manner, please take a screenshot of it and include it in the photos of your job site so that it's recorded. We wouldn't want anything to go wrong and then you end up getting blamed for it if it was just an error code. So now that we're all set to go, we can set a timer for about 25 minutes and we can start doing our photos and cleaning. So before you start cleaning, we gotta take our before photos, and then after we clean, we'll take our after photos. Some guidelines for these photographs. I highly recommend that you use your cell phone's own regular camera instead of the in-app camera because of the quality, and that way you have a backup of the photos if anything goes wrong. Of course, after the day's done, you can go ahead and delete these photos. No need to, to take up your cell phone's storage space. The photos you take should all be nice and level, which can be made very easy using your cell phone camera's in-app level, which you can enable on any modern smartphone. Make sure your flash is off so we don't have any weird gradients of lightness and darkness. These photos should also be decently lit. Obviously, it being nighttime might make that difficult, but you can use the street lights that are in the lots to your advantage when taking your photos. Also, most modern cell phones will have low light photography features already by default, so it probably won't be an issue anyways. Of course, because photographs are in one dimension longer than the other, you're gonna have some sky in the background, but try to keep the actual lot as the majority of the photo. So now I'll take you around an example lot using this diagram on screen of where to take each photograph. So for my example, we're gonna start here in the front corner of the parking lot. You'll take one photo going down the main strip of the parking lot that goes along the front of the building, and you'll make your way forward taking at least four photographs of the lanes that go down the parking lot. When you're halfway down the main strip of the parking lot, please take another photo that goes down the same lane that you took before. And then continue. So because we're gonna have two photos along the main road of the lot and then four in total going out, you wanna space them out accordingly so they have some even coverage. Once you reach the end of the front of the store, we're gonna continue and go around the back of the store. And you should take another photo that consists of the road leading to the back of the store. You should take another photo of the main stretch of the back of the store, along with the loading dock or loading area. And then you can continue to the next corner and take a photograph of the road that leads back to the front. And after that, you have full coverage and you'll have 10 photos. Once you're all set, take in all your photos, you can go and tab back into SCP and upload them. You'll click more, click attach, and then select your photos to attach to the job site. Then you'll simply start cleaning your zone, whatever that might entail for the specific job site. Once your timer goes off, signifying it's been 25 minutes, you can go ahead and do the photographs once again to show how the site is after you've cleaned it. If you wanna rewatch that section to get another refresher for it, Go ahead and click to the timestamp right here on screen to go and check that out. It'll also be labeled along the timeline of this video, so you can easily skip to it. You're gonna go ahead and upload your photos into SCP and Samsara. After your photos are done uploading, you can go ahead and log out of the site on SCP. 
you're gonna go ahead and click check out and then incomplete and then you can mark each thing that was done at your job site. Hit submit and then write in your signature. Finally, click send. Next, you're gonna log out of the site on Samsara. Select the date and time and then sign and print. Hit NA for the store name and then sign it. Add any notes if it's necessary, i.e. if there was a gate blocking access to the rear or if something else prevented you from doing the site as you normally would. Hit send and see that it's been submitted. Then you can find your next job site in Samsara and this will prompt you to load its coordinates into the apps map of your choice. Now, of course, this is the first thing that I said in the video, so now we're gonna repeat the steps. You'll head to your next job site and continue doing the same thing. There might be different specifications for different stores, such as a BJ's, a Lowe's, or a Home Depot, and you can learn about what different things you might need to do from your coworkers and supervisor.